Well, thank you very much. Asini. Hope I've said that right. Rock woman. Hi, hi, hi. <coughs> Folks, um, uh, I'll uh, share my remarks now and I'll try to keep them a bit short so we can get on with uh, the important business of, of hearing from experts because that's what this is really about. Thank you all for being here, whether you're here in person or uh, through the web, your attendance in this round table uh, can help us ensure that uh, we take strong, bold steps for better uh, protection and reporting of our children. The members of this round table bring different perspectives to the issue of reporting the death or serious injury of a child in Alberta. And as a new minister um, in the job for uh, a busy five weeks, I've been talking to a lot of people, both internal and external to my ministry, and I've been learning a lot, learning a lot about things that are happening, things that are being planned, uh, other things that need to be done to improve services we provide to vulnerable children and families. What is clear is that there are things we can do to make things better. And in doing so, we'll help increase uh, public connectedness and confidence in the system and in the caring and committed people that work within it. I want to take concrete actions and institute real change to protect and nurture Alberta's most vulnerable children. And when tragedy occurs, Albertans need to be assured we follow best practices, the right processes, and publicly report the right information. I have seen firsthand uh, the challenges that can bring children and families to the child intervention system. Uh, I've also seen how reaching out to a family and helping them with their struggles early on can help parents get back on track so they can keep their children safe. That's why this round table is so important. This is a, a strong step in our plan to improve the child intervention system. This, uh, as you know, this plan uh, includes having this round table where experts, policymakers, and stakeholders together at a round table come up with ideas uh, on some important questions. I've also appointed a, a multidisciplinary team of professionals to accelerate action on recommendations from previous reviews and guide action on implementing them, which includes um, th action based on this round table. Consistently sharing information on the child in information uh, intervention system with the public to ensure ongoing improvement. This is something that uh, I'm incredibly committed to because when we share information about these children, we honor them. When we share information about a child uh, whose story may involve a lot of tragic circumstances, we have potential to learn from it. When we share information all of us as policymakers, as stakeholders, have the ability to come together and see how we as a collective, as a society, can do better. I strongly believe that uh, better and more data leads to better decision making. It leads to better discussions and ultimately better care for Alberta's children and families. We have a lot of data around throughout a multitude of different agencies, a multitude of different government departments. We need to make sure that data works together to best support children. And we need to make sure that we use that data to learn, to identify trends, to make changes. 
I had a conversation with Gord Fanuf yesterday, and he reminded me of something. Well, he taught me something. He, was, he told me the story of how uh, glass pop bottles injured a lot of children. And it was the data of collecting, uh, it was the collection of data around glass pop bottles and, and child injury that led to the plastic bottle. Without that data, it was just a series of unfortunate tragic events. But the collective of, of the data led to change fairly quickly. So if we in Alberta make more data available and our friends and neighbors across this country start making more data available, we get to identify trends a little easier. If we can't identify certain trends based on a small population size in one jurisdiction, but that data collected throughout the country can help us make really significant change quicker and it can save lives and injury. The other, uh, the next phase of the plan is, is to look at enhancing the education, training and support of our workers on the ground uh, to help strengthen casework practice. They're incredibly dedicated people dealing with incredibly difficult human situations and they're human beings responding to them. We need to see how we can support them better. Finally, we got to get to the root causes. We need to pay a lot of attention as a collective, as a society, to many of these root causes. FASD, child abuse, child sexual abuse. We need to get to these. We need to be louder. We need to be louder as a collective in our opposition to these and do more to prevent it and do more to help people heal. Helping people heal is what breaks the cycle. Helping people heal is what will ensure we have healthy communities and healthy families. That's where we need to get. Taking a child into care must be the last resort when all other options have been explored. Once a child is in care, we must do everything we can to ensure they're protected and well cared for. Last night I met with some families who have lived through the experience of a child or grandchild who's died in care. These children had difficult lives beforehand. They had very difficult, challenging circumstances. We have to, we have to up the ante here as a collective and say they shouldn't have those circumstances. And when they do, our service to them needs to get better day by day by day by day. So the trauma they've experienced as young people is trauma they can overcome. They can heal, they can be strong, they can be loved, they can feel loved, they know and feel a sense of value, and they can contribute in their own way. So, we are talking about children whose lives have been cut short and the effects it's had on loved ones around them and the communities that they lived in. There are children who, through no fault of their own, were denied the opportunity to lead full and productive lives. Knowing how and why a child died is incredibly important to all Albertans. That's why during today and tomorrow, our experts and policymakers will join Albertans to discuss best practices in reviewing all child deaths in Alberta. The goal is to find the right balance between transparency and privacy as it relates to the death of a child. One of the intended outcomes of this round table is how the reporting is how to report the findings related to the death or serious injury of any child in Alberta, not just those in care. 
All of Alberta's children are incredibly important, and we have a vested interest in understanding how and why a child died. I believe that uh, this discussion will bring clarity to the, to the process of making that information public. The focus of our discussions will be around four specific questions. What supports a full and meaningful investigation into the death or serious injury of a child in Alberta? What additional steps should be taken to improve investigations what involves a child receiving child intervention services? What information should be made public about child deaths or serious injuries? What changes should we consider with respect to Alberta's Child, Youth and Family Enhancement Act's publication ban for children who have received or are receiving child intervention services? Answering these questions, the question of information release will include a discussion on the publication ban, which is so important. It is my sincere hope that we can arrive at a consensus on a number of things we can do to bring about positive and lasting change in the system. Look, consensus will help me drive change faster. When we have come up with these consensus items and a longer term uh, list of ideas to institute change, we will create a draft summary report that will be available for the public to comment on. And as you know, the final report will be tabled in the legislature this spring. As I have mentioned, uh, I've been working with a implementation team, a multidisciplinary group of dedicated professionals that will ensure we move quickly with improvements to accelerate activity on the plan. One of its activities will be to examine and prioritize uh, responses to previous recommendations for improving the child intervention system. You know, I, I, I had somebody do a real quick count of the number of reviews they've seen on the child intervention system across Canada in the last number of years. And so far, I think they saw 51. 51 different reviews of child intervention systems across the country. I'd like to see 51 action steps that we start implementing tomorrow. That's, that's the type of action I want to see. We need to accelerate action on recommendations that have already been identified without losing sight of what is most important children. A clear priority for me is keeping kids with their families, extended families, and within their cultural communities, obviously assuming they're safe. Nowhere is that more important than with our Aboriginal children and families. We need to do better in how we support them. We also need a renewed focus on the underlying issues that bring children into our care, such as child sexual abuse, we need to prevent it and enhance supports for victims. These are just some of the areas that I hope to work on and address in the near future. Resolving some of the more complex issues such as addictions, poverty, mental health, family violence can only happen when key stakeholders, agency partners and government and community works together in a collaborative way. We need to engage all Albertans in our shared responsibility in keeping children safe and supporting families. Developing and strengthening relationships with our government partners, our key stakeholders and experts such as the Council for Quality Assurance will be key to our work in the coming months. All of this work will benefit the most vulnerable. As a root, as a foundation, we honor them. We honor them for the spirit they had, the joy they brought, and we commit to learning from every single one of them so we can prevent more, so more of our little young people get to live in a world where they're free of harm, full of safety, full with the ability to create what they want. And we here need to talk about the systems that will support that, the systems that will best support 
the reviews, the systems of disclosure and data that will best get us the information to make positive changes. So ladies and gentlemen, um, I want to thank you once again. I really look forward to the, to the discussion and as, as I've said before and I'll say again, uh, items of consensus that uh, on steps that we can all take immediately are what is going to drive change quickly and I'm the sort of guy that likes to drive change quickly. So thank you very much and I look forward, uh, look forward to, to the day. Thanks.